our family were probably amongst the first victims of the Holocaust. I know that we had a very big family in Koło, Western Poland, and all of them were wiped out. They used to write letters to our family in London, like desperate letters, and suddenly they just stopped. They were sent to Chelmno, which is even predates gas chambers, it was all gas vans. The Nazis didn't keep records, they just bung them in, machine gun them into the pits and then put quick line on top of them. Out of like 400,000 people that were sent to Chelmno, only two survived. If I am going to find out information about them, I need to know as much as possible. Addresses, uh, full names, dates of birth. My great aunt Helen knows a lot more about the family. It was her parents that came from Colo in the first place. Hello. Hello. She's got lots of first hand stories that her parents have told her. What did they actually tell you about Colo? Did they miss it? Did they say it was a nice place? It was a lovely little island in the middle of a river with green parks and a very lovely place. What did they say about the, their relations with the Polish people in the town? They didn't have very many good words about the Poles. Didn't they? No. What did they say? They were say? always the Jews. Just cousins. These Who were, were all part cousins. This is all part uh, cousins. Would they have been killed? Oh, they're all dead. These Would they have been dead. killed what? These, in the Holocaust. No, that's taken in dead. 1939? Yes. Gosh, that's look at that. Right. So they sent this in the post. This picture was taken 14th of February 1939. Okay. So that's probably the last picture put, 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 that, that came that, over yeah. before he was killed. Yeah, what's that one on it? That's a, that's a nephew of my father's. He would He'd be been a Roth part. So he was killed. She looks exactly like my sister. Two, Two first, first cousins, cousins. Rothbards, Kalish. So that was taken Good. in Kalish. In Kalish, was it? But they have been killed. Well, of course. None of them got out, darling. None of them got out. They would have been, what, about 20, 25? Younger. I could always see Mummy's hurt and Daddy's hurt when they heard about it all. And when they said that Uncle Aaron had his rub around his neck, rub a time they burnt him like that. Because he wouldn't do what they wanted him to do. Was that in front of people, in front of his family? I mean, when you know things like that, can you forgive? I can't forgive any of them. I have never wanted to go back because it's just heartache. Even thinking about it, I can cry. I can't go. I have heard so many stories of such a lovely family and there's not one left. How can you go to places like that that, ha that happened to your family? There was uh, loads and loads, loads more like them there. And they're not there to sell a story. I, I don't want to know. I'm running. Mm. I know I am. I'm a coward. A big coward. On the eve of the Second World War, there were like 19,000 people living in this town, of whom about 53% would have been Jews. So obviously they made up a very, very significant proportion of this town. We had, I reckon, about 100 um, members of family who lived here, all of whom we never heard from again and shared the fate of, you know, all other Jews, really, in Poland. I think over 90% of the Jewish population in Poland was killed by the end of the war. It's quite weird when you walk around here and you see old people on the street. Anyone over 80 would have been old enough to remember what happened. I'd love to go up to them and ask them, do you remember, you know, any Rothbards? Do you remember 
where the Jewish quarter was because it, there's nothing left. The synagogue was burnt down, but I've been told not to do that. My great aunt Celia from Vienna came here a few years ago and she was just told that when she asked what happened to the Jews, um, oh, they all went to America. So I think there's a lot of, um, you know, dishonesty obviously going along here. I don't think that old people or people that were around at the time obviously want to face up to the fact that they knew exactly what was going on. So in 1941, she born a girl, okay? And her name is Fegler. Fegler. Someone was born as late as the 8th of May 1941, so they would have been probably killed. Someone had a baby then. And is this the Nazi document? The child would have been about nine months old when it would have been deported, and the Nazis registered it. So that's quite amazing to find that out. Yeah. That was probably the last Rothbard born in this town. Um, there's even an address of where they live, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, that's the one from there. I was trying to find um, a Shadowska Street, which is Polish for Jewish Street, but it seems that there's um, been a name change. That's the only street which um, isn't visible on the sat nav, actually, so it doesn't exist anymore. So it looks like they've eradicated the name of Jewish Street from the history books and also from their minds. I know that some other people in my family owned um, number 17 on Jewish Street, and I reckon. That was it over there, 65 years ago. After the Jews got sent to the death camps, that was one big perk for the local Polish population. And after the war, often the returning Jews were murdered when they came back to reclaim their possessions or their houses. This is the Jewish area. The synagogue stood around about here before it was burnt down by the Nazis. All these houses that are surrounding us now would have probably been Jewish owned, considering that over half the population of this town was Jewish. It was uh, 1939 and they dismantled the big synagogue. Okay, so this, yeah. is, this is the one here. There are some Jews from Kowal were shot, okay, without any kind of uh, uh, hearings, any kind of uh, court proceedings. So you can see the people who are shooting at this mm -hmm. person there, right? This was the, this was the moment where, where the ghetto was established. By car and by railway they were deported from Kowo to the death camp in Helmno. From this station? Yeah, from this station. People obviously in the people, town, they yeah, must people, have known. Yeah, sure, everybody knew that Jews were deported to Helmno to be killed there. Probably some Polish people thought that they might be taken there as well. Oh my god, look at that. Yeah. This is the street where my great-great-grandfather lived, number five, if we can find it. It's five? Number five, this is where my great-grandpa lived. I'm very self-conscious walking around these streets, actually, especially because people have got their windows open, because I think um, I must stand out a fair bit. And having just been to um, another one of my relatives' house with people sort of looking very suspiciously, uh, I do feel a little bit paranoid, which is why I'm keeping my voice down. I'd have loved to have gone and had a look inside, but the um, owner was sort of staring at me very suspiciously. I'm sure they'd be terrified that, you know, here's another Jew coming to get, you know, their property back. And it's obviously, you know, not about that. It's just about knowing your roots, and knowing where you came from. And I certainly feel that I've got a much better sense of that now. I've just seen some anti-Semitic graffiti, which says Jews get out in Polish. So it's like they haven't really learned anything. Being here is probably the most eerie place that I've been so far. This station here was definitely where my family would have been taken to and um, transported just four or five miles down the road to their deaths in Helmno. 
like the swallow so proud and free. There's obvious proof that our family lived here, unfortunately also died here. So that was very upsetting. It makes us realise that it wasn't uh, in a far off century, it was this century. And this place is a two hour flight from London. Never knowing the reason why, but whoever treasures freedom, like the swallow has learned to fly. Dona, 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 dona. I'm now driving the exact route that the transport of my relatives would have taken to um, Khamlo death camp and they were told that they were going to be um, sent to um, work in labour camps. They would have all been probably very confused, maybe some relieved because they'd been living in squalor in the ghetto for the last year. So they probably thought things can't really get any worse. Obviously, as soon as they arrived, the um, game of deception began and they were told by doctors in white coats just to have showers and to go into this room. They didn't realise that actually the room was the gas van. Probably some of them dead, some of them not. The doors would have opened and apparently they were machine gunned into a pit and quick lime was poured on top of them. But still then, a lot of them would have been alive and just been buried alive and it would have taken a long time to um, die. Khamno had no labour camp. It was completely engineered for death. There was no way you would have survived. nothing here really it's all just woodland that obviously was here at the time I think the most shocking thing is that there still is so much anti-semitism unfortunately I really didn't want to come away with that conclusion I mean you know from a country where 10% of the population was Jewish there are now fewer than 10,000 Jews in the whole country and yet you see swastikas, you see anti-Jewish graffiti. It's like, you know, a phenomenon, anti-Semitism without Jews. Everyone knew exactly what happened, and yet they still hate Jewish people, which I find very, very depressing.